And then I had either on the other side of the draw, I had Schwartzman or team. So they'll, I think they'll definitely be, I think they'll definitely be against each other in the quarter. And I think whoever wins that quarter final is making it to the final. And I think it'll either be, it'll be Djokovic or Shapov, Shapovalov and then Schwartzman or team on the grand final. But overall, yeah. I think Schwartzman will win. It's a miracle. Oh, yeah. What about that one? Unbelievable. Balotelli, Aguero. Crowd cheers. Here's Siddle. Oh, the ball is close. He's given him. He's given him. Peter Siddle's got a hat trick on his birthday. Welcome back. To the On The Ball podcast. This is episode 68 of the show. Today I am joined by, well, one half of the usual tennis experts and we've recruited another. Welcome back, Campbell. It's been a long time. How are you, mate? Good. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, pretty well, thanks. It's You were like, I think you had the most appearances at about episode 20 and then you went missing. Um, yeah. Well, you didn't really. You were probably in the next room to me most of the time, but yeah. um, it's bearing appearances and you're back for your youtube debut um so welcome to welcome to the youtube world um and then we're joined by brownie usual tennis expert how are you mate yeah good thanks how you going yeah pretty good um so today i'm sure if you're a tennis fan you could probably work out what we're gonna gonna talk about today um so we will be doing similar to what we did for the us open the other week um we're going to be doing a french open preview so we're going to go through the draw, look at some good matchups, make a few predictions along the way as to who we think um, could do well. And yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Um, so let's just crack straight into it, I reckon. Um, first round matchups. Campbell, you can start us off, mate, since you're okay. well, not new, but you're new old. Um, what first round matches excite you? So the first um for the women, I have for the first round matchups. My first one I put is Conta versus Goff. I put Conta because Conta she did really well last year. She got to like the semis, I think, and she lost to Vonda Rusova. Um, Conta made it to the round sixteen at Rome, and Coco has actually been playing well on clay, I think, and she did a three setter against Muguruza and Muguruza is obviously a beast of clay. So it's kind of impressive for someone at her age as well. So I think it will be a juicy matchup for both yeah. of them. I think, I think conta has got a, like a, a hard draw for herself because she's got lots of like seated and good players, but I think she could get them, but I think yeah. it'll be a juicy matchup. Yeah. I, that was one of my first one down. That section of the draw is actually so good. Um, obviously when we're recording this, the qualifiers haven't been confirmed. So that's just a bit of, um, for, for word for the rest of the episode. But at the moment in that little section, it's contact Goff, Georgi, Shelby Rogers, fresh off a quarterfinal appearance at the U S Tomoyanovich and Zachary. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see who comes yeah. out of that one. Um, so automatically, like pretty much all those matches, all the second round, all the third rounds in that section are right up there for me. But yeah, Conta versus Goff will be interesting. Conta is very prone to a first round Grand Slam yeah. exit. Um, but as you said, Cam, she doesn't mind it at Roland Garros. But um, we'll see how Goff goes bouncing back from her first round loss at the US. Um, yeah. Brownie, what are the, the first, first round one, matches? The first one... um. I'll stick with the women. The first one that that really um, stuck out to me was um, Vondrasova against Sviatek. Um, so Vondrasova made the final of the French Open last year and did well in Rome last week as well. I think she made like I think she made the semi-finals. Um, so clearly, even though it was a bit of a myth for the rest of 2019 after that Grand Slam final, um, stepped it up. Just stepped it up the last week or so and then of course Swear Tech's on is like young gun coming up unseated again as she was in um at the US Open and um although not really a clay quarter but um is in good form and playing good tennis so that's an interesting first round matchup and I'm excited to see what happens there 
Yeah. Um, both the matches we've talked about there in Halep's, um, what, what would that be? Quarter of the draw. Yeah. Um, I think I was saying to Campbell before we came on, um, I think she's actually been pretty dogged with her draw. Um, there's not like any big, big names there. Um, but like, I think there's a lot of decent clay quarters or just decent all round tennis players who could challenge her on, on if they perform well on that day. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a good one. And um, next up, so I, I did my votes for, I've kind of, I think I mentioned it in the US Open, but I finally did my votes for the tennis tournaments and Bondrasova picked up the third most amount of votes so in the room. So I was pretty impressed with her performance there. Um, someone else who I was impressed with, oh, I, I don't know why I tried to do that segue <laughs> because the next one I'm going to talk about didn't even impress me there. Um, in the women's draw, oh yeah, this is. Pro- I don't don't have too many in the first round for the women's, but um, Anjaba versus Serena Zarina Diaz. Um, Jaber, pro- I I'd never seen her play on clay, but I'm assuming she's not the greatest clay quarter. Um, like quite a power player, but um, yeah, that's just a pretty good matchup. I'd say Diaz probably wasn't too far off being seeded, so. Um, just any match where it's uh, like a high seed versus someone who just missed out on the seeding, it's always bound to be close. Um, so I'm excited for that one. Kind of froth. I feel like Kazakhstan's almost the new um, Romania in women's tennis. They've got a few <laughs> decent players coming through. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see who comes out on the top in that one. Um, back to you, Cam. Um, I have the next one that I had was Contivet versus Garcia. Um, they played each other at Rome, I'm pretty sure, and it was six three seven six, and Contevate Conte beat Garcia. But um, Garcia, I just I don't know. I think Garcia can come back because she did beat Pliskova at at the U.S. Open, like in the first round. I'm pretty sure. So we've definitely seen the talent from Garcia this year, and I think it will be a close match, like the one they had at Rome. Yeah, that's actually that's actually a good one. Uh, not yeah, sure how that, that slipped through the cracks. I have that for my last one as well. It was an interesting matchup. I think that um, Garcia also. It's the fact that it's in France at the French Open yeah. may impact there. And she is more of a she's one to thrive. I feel like in the bigger tournaments and then kind of struggle um, in the smaller ones. And but yeah. That'll be an interesting one to see because they're both like relatively in form mm. at the moment. Yeah, that the top half of most of the matches we've talked about in the women's yeah. draw, they're on the top half. The top half is a lot more even. Like the talents spread out, like even the unseeded players are pretty good. The bottom half probably has the yeah. bigger names in terms of the seeds. Oh, actually not even like Serena no. has a ranker in the top half. So I think the, the top, top half, half is overall way better. Is a much- much better side of the draw. Yeah. yeah, because the bottom half, you've got a lot of the seeds like Kennan and stuff who just aren't playing at the level of what their ranking suggests at the moment, even like yeah. Keys, um, Martic. So, yeah, the top half's very impressive. Um, we'll just, oh, my only other women's match I had here, a bit of a rogue one, but um, Layla Fernandez and Magda Lynette. Um, me and Brownie, big fans of Magda. And when we watched yep. her, when she was just a myth in like 2017 or something. Um, Fernandez, I talked about her in the US Open episode. Um, but she is like 17 or 18 or something, kind of having a bit of a breakout year this year. Probably if it wasn't for the COVID break, I think she would have found herself soaring up the rankings, but that kind of got halted a little bit. But um, yeah, Magda's... She's actually turning into a, like a pretty reliable player, which is um, you can't say that about too many people in the women's side of the yeah. draw. She usually just beats mm. the people she should beat and then loses to the people you expect her to lose to. Um, but Fernandez is a lot better than her ranking at the moment, so that would be an interesting one. And I don't th- oh they've got Kvitova in the third round, but I think the winner of that should definitely get to the third round, maybe even push on. But well, yeah, we'll see how they go there. Um, Cam. Do you have two more on the women's side or? Yeah, I'll just go through them quickly. Yeah. I had Kuznetsova versus Pavlonchenkova. Like I know Pavlonchenkova hasn't been playing like the greatest recently, but I think she, well, she's obviously better in rankings than Kuznetsova, but 
Kuznetsova made it to round of 16 at Rome, which I thought was impressive for her. So I think that will be a good matchup. And I also had Zhang versus Keys, because Keys has always been good, but inconsistent at times. And Zhang actually made it to the um, quarterfinals at the Strasbourg tournament. Oh, yeah. So I think that will be a good matchup. Yeah, that's a rogue one. The winner of that um, will probably play Cornet, which is one of the second rounds. Mm. Um, that I'm interested in. Yeah, um, no, Brownie, are you, are you all out for the men? I'm all out for the, for the women's. Oh, women's first round. All, out. all right, yeah. so moving on to the men's, Brownie, yeah. who are you interested in here? Um, well, there's the obvious one, um, but I don't really want to talk about it because it's um, there's more interesting ones in my opinion. Wait, so are you ob- saying Stan obvious Murray? one is more stand against Murray? Yeah. Obviously, yeah. What's with um, all the former like beasts? They always get drawn against yeah. seeds like um nishikori has evans and chill yeah. has team and like yeah. anderson um played a seed last time i think it's strange yeah he plays happens. um but the first one that interested me a lot was monfis against bublik um bublik is playing well this week last week and this week i forget the exact people that he's beaten I think he beat Orja Aliassane this week. Um, and last week he beat... I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, he beat... Oh, no, he lost he beat Felix pretty easily. But, but he beat... Yeah, he beat Felix quite comfortably. And Ramos. And he's through Ramos, the quarterfinals there. Which is but not one happen. reason is that um, Monfils is a top eight seed, um, which surprises me to a certain extent. But yeah, he's not in good form at all. He's um lost in straight sets in the first in his first match in Rome and in Hamburg this week. So it'll be and then Bublik's just a fun player to watch, and of course Monfils is also a fun player to watch. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see because I think it's a pretty level. Like obviously Monfils is the better player, but I think it's pretty even going into that one, and it'll be an interesting interesting to see um what happens. What happens there over yeah. the five sets? That's um, actually a good section of the draw. That part yeah. of that match is the so that's going to move me on to the, my next match, which is in that section. Uh, yeah. Kekmanovic and Schwartzman. Yeah. Um, Schwartzman that's a, that's a had a great Italian Open, made it to the final. He beat Rafa, um, lost to Novak in the final, um, but still just had a great week. Um, and then Kekmanovic, what tournament did he win? Oh, I can't um, remember. He won. It was the one in the second week of the U.S. Open. Yeah, it like was a two- kids' school. Yeah, yeah kids' yeah. school. Yeah, like I can't be, I can't lie. He played absolute nobodies, but um, still, you got to be playing well to win. You know, like five matches in a row, or however many it takes to win a tournament. So, um, that'll be interesting to see who comes out on top on that one. And yeah, that's in the same section as Bublik and Monfils. And in yeah. that section, you got Fritz, Koric, um, Mutet. Yeah. He's been playing well recently. Thompson's even been playing well recently, so it'll be interesting to see some of those matches in that section. Um, Cam, what do you um, like? In the I ha- I had Batista Agut versus Gas Gasquet. Um, they actually played each other at Cincinnati, and oh, really? they um Batista won seven five six one. So like the first set was close, second set not that close. But obviously, because Gasquet's French, I think he'll obviously fight yeah. harder in the French Open. And obviously, because it's a Grand Slam as well, he's going to play better and try and play better. But I think that with like um, the Grand Slam being in France, it'll give him more of a push. So he'll fight harder. So I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll be closer than it was at Cincinnati. Yeah. And like Batista, good. I think he's come into a little bit better form in the last two weeks, but he's been yeah. a bit shaky um, since mm-hmm. um, post-lockdown. Uh, I think he lost to Pospisil at the US Open, which you wouldn't normally expect from yeah. the great man. So who knows? Um, yeah, Batista Good's probably going in as a heavy favourite, but Gasquet, can, you can never really write, out, write off Gasquet, um, especially as Cam said in France. Um, Brownie? Yeah. So my last one that I have for the first round the men is um Yannick Sinner against David oh, Goffin. Yeah. Um have I taken your one there? No, no, that's just one of I like that one. Yeah. Um so obviously I think we've talked about Sinner a fair bit on our when we were talking about going to the US Open. But um 
he's eight, maybe 19 now. I think he's 18 or 19. And he's ranked about 60 in the world, but he's been um, obviously playing better tennis than he's like been rising. Um, and he's been in good form as well. Um, Evan, has he? I think he's been in quite good form out of lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he beat Tsitsipas, I think, in Rome, um, if yeah, I'm not okay. mistaken. Well, so, um, yeah. Yeah, so he's been playing good tennis. And um, Goffin, um, I mean, I wouldn't say Goffin's in bad form, but I wouldn't say Goffin's in great form either. Mm-hmm. He's kind of just been the, doing the whole, like, beat who he should, lose who he should probably, except sometimes he loses to people who are a little bit below him, but, like, hasn't, Hasn't copped any embarrassing losses, but also hasn't done anything particularly impressive. So he's um definitely beatable if um Sinner can step it up and like kind of play his best tennis. Um, that can be really tight. I don't think I think Goffin will run away with it in the end, but I think we can definitely we'll definitely have a couple of tight, interesting sets at the beginning of that match for sure. It's yeah, exciting. No, I like that one. Um, yeah, that's kind of. That's the exact kind of match that I would definitely target with the ground pass. Um, yeah. Would pray it cops like a show court, um, but probably wouldn't, to be honest. Uh, I've got a few more, but I'll, I'll just say one of them. Um, actually, I don't even want to talk about it, but Team Chilich um, oh, yeah. kind of just explains itself. Um, Chilich, Chilich on clay, though. Yeah, surely gets that chopped. is true. Yeah, Team should um, beat him pretty convincingly, but you can never write off someone of Chilich's sure. calibre. Um, Evans Nishikori, that'll be an interesting one. Nishikori's um, coming off a long layoff. Um, he's been a bit patchy um, after the US Open. I don't exactly remember his results since, but I think in that um, tournament that Kekmanovic won, um, I think he lost to like a qualifier in the first round or something. So he's probably not seen them great, but um, yeah, he could, he could be Evans. Um, and then, yeah, obviously Stan Murray, uh, that'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Um, this is an absolute random one, but Mayo, I don't know how to say his name, but Mayo, or he was like the, he won the juniors at the Oz Open. He's playing Davidovic Fokina. So a bit of a young gun battle there, both in good form. Mayo, he's playing well in the challenges, but this is a strange one, but this is the final one I want to talk about. Um, Laszlo Dare versus Kevin Anderson. Um, very strange matchup. Uh, Dare is a probably one of the biggest clay court specialists on the tour, not in terms of his clay is like the best in the tour, but compared to his other services. I was looking at his stats on Wikipedia, so I'm not sure how accurate they are, but on clay, his win record is about 67%. On grass and hard, it's below 25 <laughs> So he's basically just earning a living on clay. Um, he's pretty useless in the other stuff. And then Kevin Anderson, obviously, got a lot of pedigree. Um, Clay doesn't probably suit him, but um, I was looking at um, some of his form in the last two weeks and he's actually playing all right. So it'll be interesting to see how that matches up. Mm. Um, But yeah, that's all I've got for the men's. Um, Cam, rolling back over to Um, the women's second round. Who are you liking there? I just have have two more men. men. Oh, yeah, you go. I'll just go through them quickly. I have Struff versus TFO. Oh, yeah. I think that's actually an interesting one. They... They, I think they both made it to like the third round of the US, something like that. So they're ba- they're playing like the same. And then I also had Berentini versus um, it's Popisil, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. The they um, yeah, he's very informed. He had a really good US Open run. He also beat um Shapovalov this year, and Berentini. I mean, he's a, I think he's like almost top ten seeded player. So obviously yeah. he's playing well. This... And he he got to like the quarterfinals at Rome, so he's playing well as well. So that would be interesting. Yeah. But for women, round two, I have the twenty 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 breakthrough artist. We have Pyron Pyron Kova. Yeah. Versus Serena Williams. Oh. Obviously, they they have to play again. They're... What the hell? Yeah. No. Yeah, they if... versed each other at the quarterfinal yeah. at the U.S. Open. And that was a three-setter. So yeah. I don't know. I, d- I don't remember. I think she... I don't know. Pirinkov actually hasn't played on clay yet. She hasn't played since US Open. Either as Serena. So I, we don't know how they both go on clay. But I think it'll be interesting. I mean, I don't think Serena is very much of a clay player. 
So, yeah, but it, it is Serena at the end. Yeah, of the day. she's won the French Open like three times. So yeah, yeah so. she'll spank. She'll still spank it down damage. the court. Yeah, it's probably like her worst surface, but um, mm. it is Serena. It would be interesting to see if, similar to Pospisil, if Piron Koba's um yeah. form can translate because as you're think, saying, um, yeah, she probably hasn't played clay for like three years. So. I don't think yeah. Piron is much of a much of a clay, clay quarter. quarter. Yeah. I don't think her. She's a bit more crafty. Not really yeah. suiting. Yeah. Not really suiting the clay court. Yeah, I, I rate that they gave her a wild card though. It was um, yeah, quite one. fitting. Um, some, I think I was saying this before we came on air, but not happy that my man Lorenzo Massetti got dogged of a wild card. Or I, I still don't, actually don't understand what happened there. Maybe it's like an age restriction or something. But he made the quarterfinals, I believe, at Rome or the third round, and yes, he's like eight, he's like eighteen, and he hasn't copped. A spot in the qualifiers or main draw mm. of the French. I'm really not yeah. sure what happened yeah. there. Um, but yeah, I like that one. Um, Brownie? Yep. So next I have for the women, Ostapenko against Karolina Pliskova. Um, it'll be interesting. Ostapenko won the French Open, would you believe it, in 2017. <laughs> who, who remembers that? Um, she's now probably... Not in the top fifty. Um, probably hasn't been in a while. But um, and look, I don't really have full confidence that she'll get past the first round. But um, it'll be interesting to see because she has won the French Open, which is obviously very capable. I mean, she didn't just win the French Open by beating Rainer. She definitely she beat like I think she beat Kerba and Stoza and Halep and all these good players in that run. So Stoza. Yeah. Yeah, Stoza. Stoza French Open though. Yeah. Um, Stoza won a she won a grand two years ago as well. Yeah. Um yeah, so that'll be interesting. Cause also Pliskova, I mean, she is a little bit injured at the moment because she retired she retired in the yeah. Rome final. But yeah. she made the Rome final. So she must be in even though her form didn't seem great and she's not the most reliable um she did make the final there, so she obviously has some form coming in, and it'll just be interesting to see. I hope that match happens. Just pure interest on how Ostapenko can play in the place, and because also she's a definitely a confidence player. If she loses confidence, she loses because yeah, she would just cracks hit it. the ball to the back fence a million times. But um, yeah. when she has confidence, which she clearly has at the French Open, considering she won it, um. It'll be interesting to see. She's definitely capable, so I'm excited for that one. Yeah, I like that one. Um, next up, oh, also Ostapenko's played pretty well this week. She beat Burton, yeah. so um, showing yeah, she, she got could to be the play specialist. I mean, Burton just shouldn't be seated. Kick her off. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually agree with that. Um, my second round, I've only got one, I think, but um. Yes, well, this might not even happen because they, neither of these players are reliable. But Yastremska versus Bouchard. Um, Bouchard's been in great form on the clay. Um, obviously, she's better than her ranking suggests. She's ranked like, I don't know, 280 or something. But um, she's had a long, like, well, not a layoff, but she's been pretty bad for a long time. Um, and then just recently, she's kind of hit form again. Um, in my. This is probably mainly due to her poor um, ranking, but in my voting thing, in the last two, last two well, internationals, what they call them, the WTA that she's um, participated in, she got the full marks. Um, I think one of them she won or made the final and the other she made like the semis or something. Um, so she's playing pretty well. Um, and then Yastremska, she's just hit and miss really. Um, mm. Some days she can be good, some days she can be bad. I think she beat... Um, Anna Samova the other week and then um, she was looking all right against Halep at one point so um, we'll see how she goes and to be honest I know this sounds biased just because we're Australian but she might actually have issues with Gavrilova um, Gavrilova yeah. played a ITF a tournament um, this week I think it was or last week it was like her first tournament in ages I believe because when I googled it there was like no nothing to scroll past um, <laughs> so and I think she made like the semifinals or something. She won and she qualified for the tournament. So I think she won like six straight matches or five straight matches. So she's coming in with a little bit of form as well. Former top 30 player, if I'm not wrong. So, yeah. but yeah, Bouchard, Yastremska is probably the matchup I'm picking this based on. But who knows? That they, they could be interesting to see more of those first round matches as well. Um, Campbell? 
Uh, next, I have the American face down. I have Collins versus Brady. <laughs> um, Brady played very, very well at the US Open. She made it to the quarters or the se- I think it was semis. the quarters. Semis. semis. Yeah. Who did she lose to? It's Naomi. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, um, and also Collins is actually playing well. She, um, she versus Contevent, I'm pretty sure, and she, it, it took her three sets to win, to win. I think she beat Contevent or Contevent beat her. But either way, she's still playing really well. So I think it'll be juicy because yeah. they're both smashes off the ball. They like to rip it through. I mean, it's all Americans do. But I think it'll be interesting. Yeah, I- that's actually it'll be interesting to see how Brady goes on clay because yeah. she's obviously been smashing it on the hard court. Um, so we'll see how that translates. I don't know if she's played um since the US Open, but could be wrong. No, there. she hasn't. Yeah, so that'll be interesting to see how they go. Mm-hmm. Um, both up against qualifiers, so it'll be interesting to see how they who they're drawn against. The it's kind of disappointing the qualifiers aren't out yet because although it's unlikely like a qualifier is going to beat someone ranked in the top thirty especially in women's tennis, if you get matched up against, like, a clay court specialist, um, you know, it could, like, kind of change the dynamic of the draw almost. Um, Brownie, any other second-round matches that um, interest I had you? one more. Um, not too much to say, but I just had down um, Madison Keys against Cornet. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Just because they played at the US Open and Cornet got up in the first set and then Keys retired, hurt, but yeah. Cornet was still up in that match. And I think they'll both get, probably get through to the second round. And it'll be interesting to see how Keyes comes back to the person that she should have come, she should have beaten um, at the US Open. And the clay will favor Cornet more and that it'll make the match up more even than it was um, on hard court. But um, yeah, I'm interested to see what happens there. Yeah. uh, If Keyes brings it and produces, she'll obviously win, but, um, Cornet's like scrappy and isn't going to let Keys cruise through. Yeah, it's going to be interesting in this tournament, I think. I think there's going to be a lot of upsets. Um, we saw in the last like two weeks of tennis, there was a lot of um, top-ranked players losing to um, pretty unknown players like outside the top 100 or outside the top 50 just because um, it could be... Like if you've trained over hardcore during the lockdown... Um, this could be the first time you've played on clay in like, mm-hmm. I don't know, like nine months or something. So I like, I know, for example, Cornet, she's coming, she hasn't played a tournament. Um, so, oh no, she's playing this week in Strasbourg, but it'll be interesting to see players who are coming in like fresh onto the clay. Um, we could see some huge upsets. Um, but speaking of clay court specialists, moving over, oh, Campbell, do you have any women's um, second round oh. left or? I have just two more. I have I had her cog versus Lynette. I thought that would have been good because they're both like kind of like the that's, same. That's a grand pass match right there. <laughs> like, and then I have Sabalenka versus Kas Yeah, yeah. I thought she, that would have been that would be good as well because she yeah. made it to Kasatkina made it to yeah of Rome and Sabalenka's yeah. doing well in Strasbourg. So yeah, that's an interesting. That, that would have been interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the men's, if we're all done with the women's. Um, yeah. So speaking of, um, you know, people outside the top 50 who could upset a seed, um, I'm looking at Demonor versus the winner of Del Bonus and Londero. Um, I'm like, I would put money on the guy Demonor is playing, basically. I think I think I was, oh, I tweeted about it the other day. I can't remember. I think Demonor's win percentage on clay in his career is 16%. Or something, yeah. Um, I think he just doesn't get I think any won two matches out of about thirteen or fourteen. Doesn't get any um, false spin on the ball. Yeah, so doesn't hit the ball with any kind of like work on it to get yeah. it through the court enough. So yeah, his tactics don't really work on the clay court. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see who he's up against. He's playing qualifier round one, so he actually might even struggle there if it's someone like a Chechenato or who's just lurking in the qualifying <laughs> draw. <laughs> I would not want to play Chechenato. He's actually kind of hit form again the last two weeks. Um, but yeah, Del, Bono, Del Bonus, Londero, on hard, wouldn't t- ever talk about this matchup, but both of them are pretty decent on the clay. 
I think Del Bonas had a pretty good week the other week, and then Londero, I'm pretty sure he's won like clay 500s before. Um, probably just that crap Rio one, but yeah. Um, I, 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 like we're doing this fantasy thing for the French Open. Well, I think we are anyway. Um, and it puts like odds on the players, and if you tip the person who's going to lose, you get more points. Uh, the, per- the person who's expected to lose and they win, you get more points. This is like a prime example where I might go the underdog for some um, points here because I'm not back in Demon or in, um, despite being an Aussie man. Um, just don't have any faith on him, on the clay with him. Cam, any other second round men's matches that you're interested in? Well, I actually only have three round two matchups. It's probably like the least matches I have. But I have Kofer versus oh, yeah. either Warinka or Murray. Um, Kofer made it to the quarterfinal of Rome, and he actually took Djokovic to a three-set match. So I think Kofer actually is one of the better male clay players. So it would be interesting to see how he would go up against like a Grand Slam winner. I mean, like they're both Murray and Warinka aren't as good as they were when back when they won Grand Slam. But they're still really good tennis players, so I, it would be interesting to see how they both go up against Kofa. Yeah, that's actually a spicy yeah. one because I, yeah. I don't think Stan's in great form either. I think he lost to someone in the first round the other week or something yeah. like that. Um, and, yeah, um, Kofa. He lost, he lost to Massetti, or I think Massetti. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah Massetti won a set six love against him, my man. Yeah. And, well, and Murray has always struggled on clay, so... Yeah. The fact that he's not as good as he used to be and clay, that combination, he's not yeah. that much of a um, danger. Do you reckon mm-hmm. clay is better? Like, um, So for, for someone with like a run-down body, do, do you think clay is better or worse? Worse. Worse. Because you have to like slide and stuff. Because you have to run around. Yeah. The point is so much longer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Murray, even though Murray's run-down, he can still handle the long points. That's like what he's known yeah. for anyway. So he just can't. Finish points on clay. Yeah, yeah, but he has um, like the most yeah. um, Grand Slam five set comebacks or something, which is like from three love, uh, two love down. I think, I think he broke that record at the US. Um, but yeah, Brownie. Um, the next one I had, which is a bit of a random one, was um, Garen versus um, Hugo Umber. Yeah. So, Garen isn't in particularly good form at the moment. I mean, he's doing all right this week, but he is the clay. He is a clay court specialist. Um, I found it interesting. I looked at it before. He's, number, he's in the top 20. Well, he's almost in the top 20, but he's never made it past the second round of a Grand Slam in his life. Um, he's just done well in the South American clay the court South tournament. The South American swing him, needs to be and, changed. <laughs> managed so to get bad. himself up into the top 20. But um, there's always one of them. It was Quavis, now it's Garen. Um, yeah. But anyway, Humbert last week beat um, Anderson and, I've got it here, he beat Kevin Anderson and Fabio Fanini, both straight sets. And then he beat Medvedev this week. So those are some very good wins under his belt. Yeah, mm-hmm. so um, he's in good form. And Garen, this clay court specialist, um, I'm backing him to get over Cole Schreiber. Um, that'll be tight. He could he could lose to Cole Schreiber, but it'll be interesting to see what happens there. And I think both of them, both of them, good on the clay, in good form, and it'll be an entertaining, entertaining one. Yeah, I was kind of keen for Garen to see how he'd go in the clay court, and mm. he's just shown that he's not even a clay like. He's just a beast. South American he's clay just specialist. South, like he just thrives when there's no one else playing. Um, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, I I'm pretty confident Umber will make it out of that. Um, like tiny part of the draw there i think you'll make it to the third round i back him in um my final second rounder on the men's side i qu- i mentioned in the first round so i'll just quickly touch on it but um mutet versus the winner of kek manovich and schwartzman so probably schwartzman versus mutet um mutet is playing a qualifier but i'd back him in he's in good form uh schwartzman would like be expected to make it through to the third round there but um you never know M- mutet's young he's french um, so he probably doesn't mind the clay himself uh, and he's in good form. So should, solid recipe for a good match. Another one that 
Uh, it's probably not going to like be on TV or anything, but definitely would choose to go to that if I had a ground pass. Mm. Um, but yeah, that moves us on. Oh, Cam, are you are you all out? Or uh, I just have Fritz versus Thompson. I thought that would have been spicy because like they're both good. I think Fritz made it to um, third round at US five set against Sh- Shapovalov. And he also made it to the Mexican Open final, so I thought that was good. And Thompson made it to round 16 at US, so I thought they're both in good form. And then I had Sitsipas versus um, Cuevas. I think that's how I say it. Um, they faced each other at the German Open. It was 7 5 6 4, so it, it was a pretty close matchup. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So it was a pretty close matchup, so I think it might be another close game. Because Sitsipas. Yeah. Ha- Sitsipas hasn't won a match. I mean, he probably has won at the German, but he hasn't, like, convincing won matches lately. Like, he lost to Sinner at Rome. So I don't think he's in the best form on clay. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually think... Um, I, I didn't want to say this in the first round because I think it's a bit of a stretch because Munar's not in great form himself. But um, I wouldn't actually be shocked if Munar troubled Sitsipas with the form mm. Sitsipas is in at the moment. And Munar being Spanish and young... Um, I'm kind of just assuming he's all right on clay. I actually don't know if he is or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, that Thompson Fritz one, that's interesting because as Brownie talked about in the first round, they've got Monfils and Bublik in that section and Monfils isn't in good form. So um, Fritz, after he did make the third round, um, which is where like his seeding suggests he should make, but he probably would have been disappointed to cough up match points against Shapovalov. Um, and then obviously the draw opened up with the no-back thing. So this could be an opportunity for him to bounce back and mm-hmm. take advantage of what seems to be, although it's like a tight draw, um, it could be a soft draw compared to what else he could have had to have faced. Um, so I'm interested in that one. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm all out for the second round. Are you all done, Brownie? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on to the women's third round before we get into our predictions um, for the overall tournament. Um, this is pretty hard to predict the women's third rounds because we have no idea who's going to actually make it there. But I'm kind of just going to pick out sections that could produce a um, fascinating third rounder. Um, So that section we were talking about before with Contavite, Garcia. um, Yeah, and Mertens. Mertens. Yeah, there's Mertens in there. Kinefi, um, she's obviously pretty old these days, but um, back when she was a bit younger, she used to be prone to a big upset victory. Um, Sastinvich is in really good form at the moment. I think she made the third round or something of the um, US Open and then she did well on a 250 the other week. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of good players in that section, four or five people who I could see making the fourth round. Um, so I have no idea who's going to be in it. I wouldn't. They're definitely not going to be getting picked in my French Open fantasy team because I don't know who's going to win any of the matches. But... um. It's going to be interesting to see who comes out of that one alive. Um, yeah. Brownie, what, what about you for the third round of the women's? Um, so I had that one, and then the other one that I had was um, Brady and Muguruza. So Muguruza, obviously in good form on clay, just a good, decent clay court player. Brady just in generally in really good form. So I thought that would be a really interesting matchup there. Um Muguruza is probably, looking at the draw, Muguruza is, well, not probably, definitely the favourite in the bottom half of the draw, in the yeah, whole bottom half. That's even though she's not shadowing to a future if, prediction of um, mine. Even though she's not a top eight seed, she's yeah. easily um, the biggest name and the person who's the most dangerous in that half of the draw. But Brady is depending, but I don't really know how, I don't really know much about her on the clay, but... Um, it doesn't really matter because she is her form this year on hard court is better than her form any other year on hard court. So um, can't really be underestimated at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see how Brady performs and if Muguruza can stack up against her form. Yeah. Cam, what about you? I have Yastremska versus Vondorusova. I thought that would have been a juicy matchup. Um, Vondrasova made it to the semi-final at Rome. I'm pretty sure she versed Muguruza and lost. Yeah. To Muguruza, yeah. yeah. And then Yastremska made it. I don't know which round oh, in Rome, no, but I she think she lost to Pliskova. I think she lost to Pliskova. Oh, Pliskova. Yeah, Muguruza. Um, and Muguruza then Yastrems- 
Yastremska, uh, I don't know where she got into Rome, but her final match was against Halep, and I'm pretty sure that ended up being a three-set match or, like, a really tight two-setter. So I think Yastremska and Vondorusa are both in great form, and I think they'll produce a, a good match. Yeah, I think this will be a big tournament for Vondorusa because um, although with the ranking thing, she's, like, kind of protected, um, I think if she doesn't lift her level in this back half of this year, I think next year she's going to be looking at like a huge ranking drop. Yeah. Um, but she seems to be a bit of a clay specialist, so we'll see how she goes. Um, she is in Hallett's um, part of the draw, so that'll be interesting if she if they meet up in the um, fourth round, um, if Vondrasova is as good as she seems on clay. Um, or, but yeah, Yastremska could be a big test if Yastremska rocks up on the day. Um other three third round matches. Um, yeah, once again, we don't know who's going to be there, but as a ranker, pretty much every one of Azarenka's matches are going to be spicy. Um, although you'd be expecting her to beat her comfortably in the form she's in. First round, she's got Kovinic, Kovinic who um, I think she made the third round of something the other day. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but um, I think she might have played Halep or something at the in Roma, I don't even know, but she qualified for something and won a few matches in the main draw, so she's in decent form. Then in the second round, she's got Schmid Lover or Venus Williams. So um, I think she played Venus the other, maybe first round of um, of Rome, and then Schmid Lover, even though her ranking is like fallen a lot, she used to be a top 30 player and she's been in all right form in the last month. And then in the third round, she's probably looking at Petinsova. Um, who's in pretty good form. Uh, I think she might have made the quarters or something in one of the yeah. um, recent tournaments. Uh, she she did made quite well. quarters in the US Open. Sure. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I remember that. I think she, I don't know, she might have lost to Brady or something. Um, and then fourth round, she's got Serena. So pretty much all of Azarenka's matches are going to be an interesting watch. Um, she's in the form, well, not the form of her life, I guess. She was in pretty decent form um, in her prime. <laughs> but um, <laughs> when she was she's one. been in great um, form for a, like this is the best form she's been in for like five years. So it'll yeah. be interesting to see if that can translate um, on the clay because um, she's got a few tough ones in there, um, especially, well, if she can get there, that Serena fourth round matchup's looking pretty juicy. Um, but yeah, Brownie? Um, that's all I've got. Cammy. Does anyone have any others? Oh, yeah, Cammy, I've, got, yeah. I've, got, I've got like four others. I'll just go through them quickly. <laughs> What I've got Sakari versus the winner of Conta or Goff. Um, Sakari had a really good run at US Open, and Contra and Goff also had a really good run at Rome, even though Goff lost in, like, round 32, but she made Muguruza go to three sets, and Muguruza's a uh, clay specialist, so that was pretty good for her. I said Conta versus Mertens. They've both been playing well this year. They're both, like high seed so it would be interesting i have kerber versus cornet cornet did really well in the us open kerber kerber's not as good as she used to be but she's still obviously kerber so she's good and then i have ostapenko versus salone because i thought like they're both like similar in how well they're playing right now and they both did well at strasburg i, I think, think Salone is gonna be fiscal yeah, yeah. There's some bold predictions here. Yeah. Back in Cornet, Cornet over Cornet keys, 100% over keys. And then Ostapenko, I like it, Cam. It's spicy stuff. Yeah, Cornet's good. <laughs> Where did <laughs> Keys enough. lost first? Keys lost first round in US Open. Cornet made it to round 16. I know, like, different surface, but, like, Keys not been playing that well. Yeah, all jokes aside, though, if Ostapenko can manage to beat Puskova, which would be a pretty big upset, the draw kind of opens up for her. Um, yeah. Like that, she's got Martic in there, who like her ranking is too high. Risk, same thing. Um, Keys, she's up and down all the time. Kerber in bad form, so it's going to be pretty interesting to see if she can beat that because she could be on for a cheeky um semi final run or quarter final run. Mm. Um, but yeah, in that bottom section, another one that interests me. Not a specific matchup, just an interesting section of the draw because I've got no idea. No idea who's going to make it out of here. So you've got Martic and Risk as the two seeds. Then you've got Gorgez, Mladenovic, Kurta Matova, um, who are all um, former seeds themselves, if I'm not mistaken. I think Kurta Matova used to be a top, like, 
she was just like on the fringe of being a seed. Um, but yeah, Milosevic and Gorges, they've been like in and around the seedings for like the last five years. So it'll be interesting to see who makes it out of that section. Um, now onto the men's. Um, we'll go through the men's third round, then we'll go on to our predictions. Um, Brownie, which men's third rounds interest you? Um, well, I think the one that clearly interests me the most is Dominic Team against Casper Rude. Um, Casper yeah. Rude in very, very, probably, well, definitely in the form of his life at the moment, um, beating Berrettini and making the um, semi final at the Masters last week. And now he's in the quarterfinal in Hamburg um, this week. So he's played a lot of matches on clay, got a lot of got a lot of matches under his belt, maybe a bit tired coming into the French Open, but his first couple of rounds, he's got Sugita in the first round, who not who's just not playing well, I don't think. Not hasn't done anything of interest in a in a few years. And then second round, Tommy Paul or James Duckworth, who neither of them are particularly dangerous on the clay either. I don't think rude. Even if he's a bit tired, I think he. I'm confident that he'll get through that. Um, and I think team, if he plays well in his first few matches, will beat Rude. But I think it'll be interesting to see how Rude can stack up, because um, obviously he lost to Djokovic, but he's been playing very well and like just very very solid tennis. Like he's not giving away much, just like doing the right, doing everything right. Nothing particularly special, but just like getting the job done. Um, in lots of his matches, which is impressive to see. And he does play a kind of a similar style of tennis to tennis, just like a bit toned down. Um, so um, And obviously they're two of my favourite players as well, so I'm excited to see them against each other. Um, yeah, exciting yeah. to see. I think most people expect team to win it easy, given his um, you know past few years at Roland Garros, but I think it's going to be harder than people think. Yeah. Um, Rude's form obviously speaks for itself, but team's not going to really be rolling into it with much practice under the belt. He's got no. Chilich and Apelka who aren't really going to be testing him on clay and they're not um, good tests. Like they're not playing they're like not, rude, if you know what I mean. They're not um, giving him much. They're not going to give him many rallies or many. Yeah, exactly. He's not going to be the one doing the play. Like he's just going to be like dealing what he's dealt and getting yeah. the job done rather than grinding away. Whereas yeah. he's going to have to grind away against Rude. Yeah, so it's going to be his first like a legitimate clay match, really, um, of the season. So it's going to be interesting to see how quickly he can adapt to the, his favourite surface. Um, yeah, that's a good one. I've only got one other, to be honest. I actually think the men's draws not great in general. <laughs> I don't know why. There's just I found that there was a lot more. I think it's just because I don't know the clay specialist that well. And maybe once the qualifiers are in there, there'll be a few more interesting matches. But... Um, for me, the standout was Shapovalov and Dimitrov. Um, to be honest, like if we talked about this two weeks ago, I wouldn't have even been interested with the form Dimitrov was in. Um, but I think he had a decent tournament. Was it yeah, at he Rome? Did. Was Rome. It in Rome or this week? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, in Rome. Um, and then Shapo, um, he made the semis of something, didn't he? Uh, my, my memory is um, completely gone. He made the semis in Rome. Yeah, I thought so. So um, they're both in pretty good clay form. Um, Chapeau, similar to Rude's in the form of his career so far, and he's um, starting to become a consistent player, which is a tough thing for young players to start becoming. Um, and Dimitrov is famously inconsistent, so that'll be a pretty interesting one um, if they can both get there to that third round. Um, and then yeah. – they could be the representative from that bottom half of the top half, bottom, yeah, so the second quarter, because they've got Medvedev, who's in shocking clay form, Tsitsipas, shocking tennis form, um, and then there's not really anyone. Rublev, he got beaten yeah. by some rando um, the other day, I think. That's that's the quarter to be in if yeah. you're a, like, not top eight seed, but, like, seed below that who's looking to go deep. That's... That's your section of the draw that you want to be in, for sure. Yeah, that there could be a call I'm going to make in a few minutes coming yeah. up in that part of the draw. Um, Campbell, any other third-round men's before we get into the predictions? Yeah, I've got three. I have Felix versus Kofer. I thought that would have been... I, I like the confidence. 
I think Kofa's playing really well recently. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. he made it. He made it to the yeah. quarterfinals at Rome, and Felix obviously he's young and he's really good. Um, because he made it to round sixteen at US, so they're both in good form. I also had Carino Busta or the winner of Batista Good and Gasquet, because I think one of the whoever wins that will make it far. Like they'll make it to the, probably the semi. Um, obviously Carino made it to semi final. Semi final. Djokovic is in their part Djokovic of the draw. Djokovic is in their quarter. No, I mean quarter. Oh, okay. They they, they could then, be very quarter, yeah. Karina obviously made it to the semi final after Djokovic did his thing, and then Batista Agut and Gasquet are obviously playing well, and I think Gasquet because it's in France, he'll play better. And then the other one I had was Humber versus Chachanov. I just think they're playing. They're both playing well. Humber made it to the quarterfinals at the German Open. Um, he played. He was in a three set match against Shapovalov at Rome. And Chachanov made it to the third round at US and round 16 at German. So I think they're both playing well. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, Brownie, do you have any more matches you want to talk about? Yeah. Or? I just have one more that I just thought was a little bit interesting. It's um, Stefanos Tsitsipas against Krajinovic. Krajinovic is in good form, I think. Um, he's a clay quarter. Um, he... Got to a, a set to a tie break playing well against Djokovic, and he beat um, Orja Aliasim and then Cecinato, who's a clay court specialist in Rome. And he is a he is a good clay court player. And I think that if Tsitsipas manages to get through his first two matches, which is not necessary, I think Kranovic will get through his first two matches. I'm confident. Um, no one in his section, unless the qualifier is good, is too damaging. But um, if Tsitsipas manages to get through to the third round, he's going to really struggle against Kranovic, I think. Um, because, yeah, Kranovic is in good form and Tsitsipas isn't particularly, and Kranovic is going to make him play but also punish him. And, like, um, yeah, I'm really interested to see how Tsitsipas can deal with that and if he can step it up, um, which I don't have full faith that he will be able to. Yeah. Yeah, um, all right, so that moves us into our predictions if we're all done there with the draw. Um, Campbell just mentioned him before. My pick, so first up, we're going to talk about unseeded players who could make a little bit of a cheeky run. Um, this guy's probably unlucky to not be a seed. I think he's just sitting outside um, the top 30 on the rankings. I think he's like um, high 30s. Um, but Umber, um, yeah. we've talked about him in pretty much every round. Um but I'm confident he can beat Garen if he yep. beats Cole Schreiber. Um, Garen, he's a clay quarter, but we have talked we talked about he's in pretty average form. Um, then Kachinov, I think he's played decent one of the last two weeks. So he had a decent win, I think, but it's Kachinov at the end of the day. Um, who knows what you're going to get going to get with him? And Kachinov he's all lost over the place at the moment. Kachinov lost yesterday to Lajevic, one and two. Yeah, yeah, I did see that actually. Lajevic, yeah. we might talk about him. In a, a little bit, yeah. but yeah, catching off. Um, so unpredictable. Well, at the moment, he's actually predictably bad. So I'm pretty confident in Bear can make it out of that section. Um, unfortunately, he would have to meet Djokovic in the fourth round, but I think a fourth round performance for him would be awesome at his yeah. home. Um, I almost said Grand Prix, his home Grand Slam. Grand Slam. Um, that'll see him get a huge boost in the rankings as well. Or well, I actually don't know how he went last year at the French, but um, yep, yeah, I'm pretty confident he can go far. Um, Brownie, which unseeded player are you keen to see? Um, well, not keen well, to see, but think um, can go deep. The clear one was Kopfa, but he's been talked about a bit. So I'm going to go with my other pick, which was a very rogue pick because I was just looking through the draw um, and I was looking at a section which I thought was a little bit open. And this guy has always been in and, ab- in and about, but never really like stepped it up on a grand slam. In a grand slam, and I think that today this draw may be his opportunity, and that's Lorenzo Senego. Oh, I was literally um, just looking at it, I was saying, hoping you say, <laughs> Yeah, so he's in the section of the draw with Monfils. So Monfils and Bublik, he's got a qualifier in the first round. Um, who knows who that's going to be, but and then Monfils and Bublik. I mean, of course, none of these are guarantees for him, but they're all winnable. Yeah. Um, so he can beat the winner of that match if he plays well. And then Fritz, not really a clay court guy. Neither is Jordan Thompson. And Radu, 
I don't think he's getting through the third round. Yeah. Um, so I think Lorenzo, if he he has a good opportunity here to get to his first um, Grand Slam fourth round. He's never made it past the second round of a Grand Slam before, as a matter of fact. And people see him a bit of a young gun. He's actually 25, so he is kind of ready. He's gotten to the point where, and he's in the top 50. He's been gradually creeping up on us, and I think he's, it's his time to um, do something impressive. Um, so he's done little things, and people know of him, but he's never really impressed, done anything particularly impressive. He's just kind of creeped up on everyone. And so, I th- yeah, I think the time has come definitely for him to um, do something big, and I think this is a good opportunity. Cam, who do you like? I think it might be a bit rogue, but I said Pos- Pospisil. Ooh. I think if he beats Berentini in the first, Berentini is probably the biggest struggle he has, and yeah, it's the best that. round. But if he beats Berentini, he has to verse Harris then Poprin, which I think he can easily do. And then he has to either verse Struff, Tifo, or Lopez, which I also think he can also do because he's been playing well on clay. But then at fourth round, that's where he could get stuck. But I do believe that he could be either one of the Spanish, either a good or booster. I think he can make it to the... I don't think he's going to win, obviously not. But I think he could make it to one of the finals and have two Canadians in there. So, you know, it'll be interesting. Yeah, the 100%. If he gets through that first round match, the draw's not too bad for him. But um, that first round match is going to be very tough. Um, I've got two guys. Umber's my main man, but Sinner kind of got to just watch him every tournament. Um, he's obviously way better than his ranking is at the moment. He's got Goffin in the first, r- probably Rusevori in the second, and then likely Pear in the third. So it's not the easiest run, but I think they're all winnable matches for him. Um, and then he'd go on to play probably Zverev in the fourth round. So I think he um, wouldn't be able to get through there. But fourth round for Sinner would do a wonder for his ranking and... I don't know. I think Sin has been pretty unlucky with some of his draws of late. Um, he seems to keep getting really good players in the first round, but he's doing what he can with it. Like he got a win against Sitsipas um, in Rome. So I think this could be his tournament to break out a little bit and um, finally crack that top 50, which he is kind of mm. taken a bit longer to do than maybe expected. I guess with the COVID break, it's actually not been that long he's been on the tour. Um, and then... Two other guys I just want to quickly mention, not nothing in depth, but Manorino and Ramos Vinolas. Um, so they're playing each other, and then the winner's probably going to play Medvedev. But I honestly think with Medvedev's clay form at the moment, they could win that, either of them. Uh, Manorino, French favourite, obviously. I think he had a couple decent results um, at, it was either in Rome or at Hamburg this week, and then Ramos Vinolas is a pretty decent clay player. And then the other seed in that section is Basilash V, who's um, unpredictable as always. So um, if they can somehow get past Medvedev in that second round, then all of a sudden that draw opens up and that's in that section where there's no real sure favourites. Mm. Um, you've got um, Rublev and stuff like that. So um, those two would be guys I'd keep an eye out on. Brownie, any other unseeded players? or? Um, no, not for the men. Cam, anyone oh. else? No. All right, do you want to on? say your women's game? Um, so for my first women, I had Bouchard. I think Ooh. she's, I know, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of an out there one. And she yeah, has like help. It. She has help in a draw, so it is hard for her. No, but that's I fourth think, round, though. That's, that's deep. Yeah. She's been playing really well this year, Um, before the break and also after the break. She almost beat Mertens at Prague Open, so I think she does have the skills to beat some of the um better women. Like she does have a test. She, I I think she's easily. I think she's gonna win her first match. I think, and then she has to probably verse Yastremska because Gavrilova. See ya. Off you go. Um, and then I think she can beat Yastremska. She might have struggle against Vonda Rusova because she's been playing very well on clay. So that probably is the first test for her. And then obviously, Halep is probably going to demolish everyone <laughs> in her in her section. So she, I think she might get to fourth round. But I think that's still a pretty good run for Bouchard as she is a wild card. Yeah. So I think 
that would be a pretty good one for, run for her. Yeah, I actually don't mind her draw, actually. Um, Vondrasova in the third is probably a big ask, but I uh, legit back her in against Jastrzemska, um, if Jastrzemska is especially not feeling it on the day. Um, Brownie? Um, yeah, I've got a bit of a rogue call here. Um, a bit of a random one. But I was just looking to the draw and more looking, not necessarily at someone who is a guarantee or anything, but once again, like um, Sinego, someone who's due due for an opportunity and due for a big performance, who has like a relatively open, an open enough draw to do some damage. And that person for me was um, Katarina Sinaikova, um, who showed a lot of promise a couple of years ago as a young up-and-coming player. Now she's number one in the world in doubles. So I think she's number one in the world. No, no maybe not number one. I think Say and Stritzer are number one, but... She's, she's been number one in the world in doubles and won a couple of grand, doubles grand slams. And she's still only like 24. But she's just yet to really make a mark in singles, um, which is surprising because she is a really good player. I've watched some of her matches before. And she's in the quarterfinals in Strasbourg this week playing solidly. Um, and oh, she didn't do very well. in She lost both first rounds on the hard, but she was probably a better clay court player anyway. But her draw, she's got Lauren Davis in the first round and then the winner of Kuznetsova and Pavel Yuchenkova in the second round, um, which are both winnable matches. And then her the her um, seed in her section is Kiki Burtons, who is someone who is not at all in form, who's just come back to the tour and hasn't really got back into their stride yet. So isn't really, isn't def- definitely not the fifth best player in the tournament, that's for sure. So... If not, uh, it obviously it would be a surprise if she made it all the way through to the fourth round. But I think it's a good opportunity for her to get a, some good match, good um, Grand Slam experience under her belt, and to show you know to really sh- string string a few good matches together. I think she's definitely capable. And obviously, it'll it's a bit random, but yeah, I'm interested to see what happens there. Yeah, I don't really have anyone I'm confident in. Um, yeah, no. I don't think I've ever been confident in what, any women's match, but yeah, um, I've just got a few in a few weak sections. Of the, well, not weak, but like even sections in the draw. Um, Camilla Georgi, um, she will probably play the winner of Contra and Goff, which we highlighted as probably the best first round match. So that's going to be a very tough one because Contra and Goff are go- both great players, but I think they're both winnable for Georgi. And then she would probably go on to play Sakari or yeah probably Sakari in the third round which I think is also winnable for Georgi she's kind of um just sat outside the seeds um on the rankings um for quite a while now um just around that like 40 ranking so she's probably like yeah they're all winnable for her basically um and then she's in that section with Sinia Kova that you were talking about um with Kuznetsova and Burton's so like I'm not saying she's going to make um, the quarterfinals necessarily, but I think she could challenge a few players and then a few others in a few of um, the more even sections of the draw. Um, Caroline Garcia, we mentioned her against Contabite. If she gets through that, then it kind of opens up for her because although Mertens, she's usually pretty reliable to be the um, people ranked below her, she also can just have an off day and get whipped like, when she got smashed by Azarenka and stuff like that. Like, I know Azarenka is better than Garcia, but she's not invincible. Um, Sasnovich is also in that um, section of the draw. She's in pretty good form. And finally, this is a strange call because I don't even know how good she is anymore. Um, but Mladenovic, um, home Grand Slam, she plays Laura Siegemund, and then she'll play the winner of Gorgas and Risk if she gets through Siegemund. So... It's not the easiest draw at all, and for someone who's pretty unreliable, it's um, probably bold to back her in. But Risk and Martic, they're probably two of the weaker seeds, um, so it wouldn't shock me if she goes on a bit of a run to the fourth round. Um, Campbell, anyone else you want to talk about? Um, I just had Piran Kova because of her great US Open run. Don't know how she plays on court. I had Cornet, Ostapenko, and then I had a bit of a rogue one. I had Jabir. I think she could probably do well. Yeah. Brownie, anyone else? Um, yeah. I, well, I'm not sure if you mentioned already, but um, 
Daria Kazakina also. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, she is in a, des- a solid part of the draw. I don't think she'd get past the fourth round if she were to go on a run. But I think she's been very lacking the last um, couple of seasons, since 2018 where she made that Indian Wells final and made it into the top ten. And then um, last year and this year, been very lacking, but showed a bit of old signs of her old form in um, – Rome last week, and even though she had to pull out against Azarenka injured, unfortunately, um, so hopefully she's recovered from that. But I think Sabalenka is um, obviously she's a good, Sabalenka's consistent and a good player, but like winnable for lots of people if they play a good match. So I'm interested to see has a good chance of um, doing well there. Yeah, um, oh, I forgot to mention this in the men's, but obviously with qualification not having finished yet. Um, it's a big ask for a qualifier to do well, but very interested to see how Chechenato goes. Um, he would be someone who wouldn't shock me if he just goes on like a bit of a run just because he's so good on clay. Well, he used to be anyway. He wasn't that good last year. Um, and then the women's qualifiers that interest me, Kuschuk, um, I think she's playing right now against Karumi Nara. Um, but if she wins through there, she's in, well, was in good form at the US. Um, this is, and then these are so rogue. So, um, but it's women's tennis after all. So if there's a clay specialist on women's tennis, who knows how far they can go. But uh, I think her name's Natalie Podoroska. Um, she has been killing it re- recently. Um, I think she did really well in one of the 250s and she won like a an ITF tournament. Um, and then another one, she's got a tough one in her final qualifying match because she's playing someone who made the final. I don't know if you saw this brownie. But there was a ITF tournament the other week um, in Prague. 128 people were in it. Um, oh. So, like, it was – you have to be pretty pretty bloody good to go deep in that one. And she's playing someone who made the final of it. But her, I don't know her first name. I think her name's Claire Torson. Um, she's younger than Campbell. And she's in pretty good form. Um, the last three weeks, she's racked up, like, eight or nine wins. Um, and, yeah, she's 17. So – and she's um, – she beat – Oh, her name's like Elisabetta Cocchiretto. Um, and she's like a young, promising Italian, pretty good on clay. And she pumped her like 6 1, 6 2. So I've um, never seen her play in my life before, but um, she just kind of caught my eye um, with some of her recent form. So if she makes it to the main draw, she could be so interesting to watch at such a young age. But um, mm. all right, now the seeds who we think, besides the obvious ones, who we think could go far, Cam, who do you like out of the seeded players? Um, well, probably everyone has him, but I would say Schwartzman. I would Ooh. say, I would say, I mean, he beat Nadal. I don't know how, but Nadal, I don't know. He was his first tournament back. He might not have been like in his form yet. So, but I still think it was a great achievement for him. His draw is pretty easy. He has to verse... I don't know any of those people. And then fourth round, he has to verse Monfils, which is probably his the biggest ask for him. But I think even though Monfils has a 16-3 record in 2020, I still think that Schwartzman can beat Monfils because he's obviously not in the best form right now. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. I think that Schwartzman can go pretty far as well because the best player, it would be... I don't know, because the quarterfinal will probably be team and then Schwartzman. So it would be interesting to see who wins out of those two. Yeah, Sch- Schwartzman's definitely the favourite in that section to make it to the quarters, um, yeah. for me anyway. Uh, the other guys, there's some talented players in there, but none who are probably as reliable as Schwartzman. Um, Brownie, on the men's side, which seeds um, interest you? The guy who's interested interesting me the most right now um, is Lajevic. Um, yeah, 100%. I think his draw is perfect. I think he'll be very happy about his draw. Um, so he's in good form. He lost to, he got to the third round in Rome, beat Raonic, um, third round, lost to Nadal. Fair, I'll cop it. Um, and then in, he chopped Kachanov one and two yesterday, playing Tsitsipas tonight in, um, Hamburg, so it'll be interesting to see how he goes there. Um, that'll provide a good indication of how he really stacks up against guys like Tsitsipas. Um, but he's got um, 
his section of the draw is pretty solid. Um, Andre Rublev is his third round matchup, and um, that's very winnable on clay for him. Yeah, I think 100%. Rublev isn't really a clay court kind of guy, and then he's got Medvedev, who I um, don't even think Medvedev will get it through to the fourth round. If he yeah. does, I'll be impressed because Medvedev just can't really play on clay. And then, yeah. um, obviously, getting a bit ambitious, getting a bit of ahead of ourselves here. But then, the court, if you got that far, the quarterfinal matchup would probably most likely be, in my opinion, Shapovalov. But um, who's the other guy who I had in the seat who I thought would be interesting, uh, who I think can go deep? But my, if I had to guess right now, I would say that quarterfinal will Medvedev and Tsitsipas won't be in that quarterfinal in either of them. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I'm excited yeah. to see what happens there. Yeah, I'm going to be He's boring. Got a good chance. I'm not going to bring anyone new to the table. I'm jumping on those two blokes. I think yeah. they're the most interesting live itch and should Absolutely. Well. Um, sadly, Rude got pitted up against Team. Otherwise, if he was against pretty much anyone else in the draw, mm. I would have chucked him in. I think Bautista Gut's kind of interesting. Um, well, that section of the draw anyway, it'll just be interesting to see who gets there. Yeah. Um, Gut's not been in the most consistent form, but he's a pretty good player. Um, and so he's got Crane Busta, who was in decent form and, well, made the US semi. And then if he gets through that, he would have Berrettini, um, who's a good player, but, like, probably not the seventh best in the world, let's be real. Um, so they're probably more just interested in that section. I wouldn't ride or die Batista a good. Um, on the women's side, though, um, ooh, seeds that I think can go far. We were talking about Sydney and COVID before. Um, Someone in that exact section, I'm going Kuznetsova. Um, I just think Kiki Burton's, I don't trust her at all, no, especially at all. Um, given the recent situ- like her recent form. Um, so I think if Kuznetsova can get over Pavlyuchenkova, which I back her in on clay um, to do that, and then that Siniakova match will probably be tough. But then if she gets through there, i will back her in against Burton's or it could be Puig. Um, and then she would have the winner of that tough section with Conta, Goff, Georgi, yeah. Rogers, Sakari. So th- th- there's no way she's getting an easy match there, but um, they're all, win- all winnable, um, which is pretty I rare think, for someone seated. I think the um, quarter finalist in that second section is um, anyone's guess. Yeah, could be anyone. There's genuinely probably seven people in out of the sixteen there who could, or seven or eight of them who could realistically make the quarterfinal. Yeah, that that top half of the that top quarter of the draw. Although you'd put your money on Halep to get out of there, I think there's yeah. so many good players in there. I actually yeah. don't know who's going to come out of it. Like Halep's, yeah. well, not not including yeah. Vardy, but she's probably the most reliable clay player. Yeah, absolutely. But, but even just the section a lot of below. good players um, to get to the quarter to get to the semi final. So, yeah, um, and she's um, you know not invincible, and she's prone to a slip up. So. Um, that's definitely the most interesting quarter yeah. of the draw for me. Um, Campbell? Um, probably, apart from the obvious, I'd say Rybakina. She's got a pretty easy draw, I think. She would have to in the um, third round versus Muchova, which I think she can easily she can easily do the way she's playing on clay. And then she has to verse Kennen fourth round, and Kennen is absolute trash. Kennen's <laughs> not getting it. Kenan's not getting there. I no, I, I, I don't call her a Grand Slam winner anymore. Rebecca I Peterson. Don't think, <laughs> I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think she's a seed at all. Kenan's not good. So I think Rybakina then should make it to the quarterfinal and Muguruza would probably win her section. So I think she might... She I think that would be an interesting matchup because they're both playing very well on clay at the moment. And uh, Rybakina could be... Muguruza, I don't know, but she might, which would be interesting. Yeah, actually, that's a great shout, actually. I, that, that slipped through my fingers there, but that is a very soft section of the draw. Um, Vekic and Kennan, probably two of the most unreliable seeds in women's tennis. Like, they just lose every second match. So, um, And then I'll be honest, Muchova, I don't really know much about her. Um, but, yeah, I really like that call, Cam. Um, Brownie? Yeah, so I've got a call here, and Hamish... You're probably going to hate me for it because you've been cheating on her a fair bit this um, podcast. But um, Petra Martic, oh, yeah. no, no, I think, um, soft part I think she's got a really good shout. So she's got 
her first couple of rounds. I mean, Kudamotov is all right, but um, Petra Martik has actually made the fourth round or better four of the last five Grand Slams. Um, That's actually, she, I apologize. Yeah. Um, That's so solid. she made the fourth round the US Open, and then she made fourth round US Open last year, um, fourth round Wimbledon last year, and the quarterfinals of the French Open last year, and just didn't do well in the Australian Open at the start of this year, lost in the second round. So she's been consistent across the Grand Slams, getting the job done. And her section, she made the quarter, she's a clay court specialist. Um, she made the quarterfinals of the French Open last year. She beat Carolina Pliskova at the French Open last year. Um, she's got Alison Risk as the seed in her third round. Alison Risk can't, I mean, she's all right, but clay, Alison Risk hasn't made it past the first round of the French Open since 2014. I found that out. Um, so she, if you've ever seen her hit a forehand, she's has some weird wrist situation going on. Yeah. She can't hit it with any top spin and on a clay court. That's a bad sign. So, um, uh, so I'm just backing. I think Petra Martic is definitely the favorite to go through the quarterfinal of that section. And then the section above there um, with Kvitova and Keys. I mean, obviously it's a bit of a massive call, but Petra Martic is genuinely for me, if I had to pick someone to get to the semi-final of that quarter, I'd be picking Petra Martic, honest to like. Interesting. Yeah, I think she has the best chance of anyone. I uh, mean, obviously, Ostapenko. Honestly, like it's not like a two to one odd situation, but like, yeah, no. it's obviously tight. But like, if I'm going to pick anyone, I'm probably going to pick her. Um, I think she's got a really good draw, um, and is and has been in good form and is set up to do, to you know. Have a good result, hopefully. Yeah, no, yeah. I like I like that call. Yeah. Um, Cam, how, do you have any more, or should we go into yeah, our I have, winning? I have one more girl. I have Kontavet. Right. Her section's pretty easy, I think. In the third round, I mean, first round she has versus Garcia, but she's beat Garcia before. Um, and then Merton's third round, I think she can do that easily. And then fourth round, Svitolina. I think. This is I think she. <laughs> Yeah, I think expecting so many people right here. <laughs> These are massive. Yeah, I think, I think Kontovic can beat Murdens, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And then Svitolina, Svitolina, um, she hasn't been playing that well recently, and I think Kontovic's in a better form than Svitolina. And then should ha- probably have to verse either Azarenka or Serena. So I don't know how she might, she would go against those girls. I think she can beat Serena. I feel, but I don't know if she could beat Azarenka. I know yeah. bold. But... Actually, I'm just looking at that part of the draw now. This wasn't going to be one of my calls, but I actually, legitimately, back Patinsiba to make it out of that section of the draw. Like I know that's such a huge call with Azarenka and Serena there, but I don't yeah. know. I just I hate Azarenka's draw so much. Like I think she has not like chal- like impossible match, but I think she doesn't have an easy match in there. Um, and I think she is probably pretty fatigued after like a pretty crazy True. month. Um, yeah. She's played a lot of tennis. Um, she did well in Rome. So like it, nothing's really suggesting that's going to happen, but I don't know. I've just got a feeling there. Um, but this kind of slides us into our winning predictions. I'm so confident that Mergaroos is making the final. Um, yeah. uh, like I'm so confident she's gonna do it. Um, she's just in great form. Um, she's made the fourth round in her last six, I believe, six French Opens. Um, fourth round or better. So she's not really prone to a like a slip up against a weaker player. And I don't think there's too many of the seeds in her section of the draw that are gonna challenge her. Um, Kennan's like we've talked about Kennan. Um, Rybakina could provide a tough matchup. Sabalenka, she's doing all right this week, but she was in woeful form until this week. Brady, yep, she's in good form, but it's on the hard court, so I'm not sure if it's going to translate over to clay. Yeah, I'm just very confident that Mergaruz is um, going to be the semi-final representative on that half, uh, that quarter of the draw, and then I'm confident she could beat whoever it is out of Martic, Pliskova, um, any of those. I'm confident she'll be making the final. Mm-hmm. And then it'll probably be tough, because there's a lot of great players in that top half. But, yeah, Mergaruz is probably my pick to win the French Open this year. Um, but, yeah, Cam, who are you, who are you pick backing in in the women's draw? I'm probably going to pick Halep. Obviously, she's the number one seed mm-hmm. in this competition. But it, 
she's been playing so well. She won Rome, and obviously yeah. Rome's not gonna predict how they're gonna play in the French. And she has, she does have a, like a sort of no, she doesn't have a tough draw. What am I talking about? She doesn't have a tough draw at all. So she's gonna make nah, it. It's, not, it's not the easiest. She's got um, Von Dressova in the in the fourth round. There's some no, tough she's she's there. she's beating her. Yeah, no, I think. Hard. I think it'll be Halep versus Muguruza, and I think Halep will win. But if Muguruza, I think it'll either be Halep versus Muguruza or Bold. I'll say Halep versus Rybkina. Spicy bit of a breakout for Rybkina. I, I like that call. Yeah. Um, Brownie, uh, you're a big Halep fan yourself. Are you yeah. backing her in that strongly yeah. or a bit worried? Not that strongly. I'm not backing her in that strongly, but I'm backing her in. I'm, she's definitely the favorite. She's definitely the clear favorite of the tournament for me. Um, by far, over the last however many, how many years will I commit? Maybe four years. The most consistent women, women's player on the tour by far over the last four years. Um, and then over the last couple of years, she's shown how that she can do it in Grand Slams as well. And she's like consistently gone deep. She's, um, yeah, because when she was just the first got to world number one and was like the best player on the tour, she was struggling to get go deep in the slams, but I think she's done a better job of late, and I am def- I am back here in as the favourite for sure. Um, I reckon she's got it. Yeah. Um, we haven't actually mentioned her at all this podcast, but I'm gonna say Mergeruza beats Svitolina. Um, like I'm basically just saying that to be bold, but um, I don't know. I my love for Svitolina is slowly starting to turn to disdain as she just wins the worst internationals on the on the calendar. That's basically <laughs> where she gets her points from these days. But she's got a really easy draw until um, the quarterfinal, I think, anyway. Um, I think she'll cruise through there. Um, she does have Klontovite and Mertens in the fourth round, but I, I back her in there, um, where she will have to meet probably Azarenka or Williams, which is very tough. But I don't know. I'm just backing her in. Why not? Um, just a bit of something else, but realistically, it's probably going to be Halep. But yeah, I'm backing in Megaruza to win the whole thing. And then the men's, Brownie, who do you like in the men's? Um, I know I was going to win, and I'm angry about it already. And it hasn't happened yet. Um, I know he didn't play well in Rome. I mean, but he had glimpses of back to himself. And he, he was his first tournament back. So he wasn't quite there yet. But the French Open is where he really steps it up, and his draw is very, 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 very easy, I think. Um, his first three rounds, he's not going to have any issues at all. Fanini is the only guy in the section of the draw that can give him problems, but Fanini's just coming back from his surgery and hasn't Have you shown seen his any. results? They've been um, so bad. Yeah, they've been so bad. Needed, yeah. He's the only guy that's capable of troubling him, but he can't at the moment. Yeah, And then... He's just so he's got four rounds. He's pretty much got four warm up rounds, and him having four warm up rounds means that by the time we get to the quarterfinals, his form's going to be back and he's going to be at his best again. And then he'll have probably Zverev or most likely Zverev in the quarterfinals, and that'll just be a nice warm up for his semi final against Team as well. I just can't see Team beating Rafa at the French Open over five sets. If it was over three sets, maybe. I think it'll be a Djokovic Nadal final and a double win, and I'll stop watching after the semis. <laughs> yeah, I like it. it's so boring, but it's definitely the odds on favorite thing to happen. Um, just to make it interesting, I'll back in Shapovalov to push Novak to five in the semis. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't like. Yeah, I don't know. There's not really anything interesting to say about the men's. I think it'll be a Nadal Djokovic final. Nadal will probably win. Cam, any. Any uh, anything rogue I'm, you want to say or not? I'm I didn't put Nadal in there at all. I thought he was not. I thought he was going to make it to the quarterfinals or the semifinals, Ooh. but he he was never going to make it to the final. I had either Djokovic or Shapov, Shapov, Shapovalov in the grand final. I think Shapovalov's playing really well, and I think Djokovic. I'm um, Shapovalov can test him, as Djokovic didn't play very well at Rome, and Shapovalov hasn't played Djokovic on clay, so we don't really know how they play against each other. And then I had either, on the other side of the draw, I had Schwartzman or Team. So they'll, I think they'll definitely be, 
I think they'll definitely be against each other in the quarter, and I think whoever wins that quarter final is making it to the final. And I think it'll either be it'll be Djokovic or Shapov, Shapovalov, and then Schwartzman or team on the grand final. But overall, yeah. I think Schwartzman will win. Spicy call, Big Ooh. Diego. I wonder where they would put him in the rankings. Surely, surely a top I think five. Sh- yeah, I think the Schwartzman team, whoever wins out of that, will win the whole thing. I don't, really? I don't give, I don't give my trust in Djokovic. He hasn't played well at the French for a couple of years. Those Schwartzman Nadal highlights have really changed as a person, Campbell. Yeah, <laughs> they've changed a lot. I mean, I mean, Nadal probably wasn't playing like the best he could, but I think Schwartzman has potential to be a top three seed once they all retire. Spicy. Uh, all right, fair enough. I would um, love to see it. But yeah, that brings us to the end. It's been an absolute, absolute marathon, marathon. episode. Um, Pilch actually predicted it, to be honest. He was saying it would go for about two hours, but um, just short of an hour and a half. But that, that's all right. It's been a good one. A lot, lot to unpack. Um, and yeah, basically, thanks for listening. If you've gotten this far, thanks for joining me, fellas. And, um, it's okay. Very, very excited for the French Open. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, good luck to all the players listening, <laughs> and good luck to all the people who are going to watch the French Open. All right, see you guys.